All right, what's up everybody? So we're gonna talk about creating some close-ups inside of Premiere. So uh, let's say you've just got done shooting an interview and now you need to uh, create some drama. You wanna, you know, you can see we've got this interview right here with Tony Hawk and we're shooting him from about the, you know, cowboy medium close-up shot from about the thighs up. And the fact is at some point he's gonna say something that I wanna draw attention to. And what better way to do it than, than literally moving the camera closer to the subject. Now, since this was a one camera shoot with a locked off shot, uh, we need to create the close up in post. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So here are the steps. Just follow these steps and you'll have a great time making close ups. So the first thing we need to do, now, just to be clear, uh, it, generally speaking, in video, we don't want to scale up our video past 100%. Video is a raster-based format, and therefore, if we scale it up too much, it gets soft, and we lose contrast, and it just looks bad. And the last thing you want to do is spend all the time to shoot an interview only to make it look bad in post. So rather than just duplicating this layer and zooming in on it to create a create a close-up, you can see that we, we lose a lot of quality when we zoom in. So rather than doing that, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna shrink the frame around our subject. So go ahead and pay close attention and I'll show you how it's done. So the first thing we need to know is that this footage was shot at 1920 by 1080. So I'm gonna go up to my sequence and go to sequence settings. And where it says 1920 by 1080, I'm gonna shrink that down to the next smallest size, which in this case is 1280 by 720. And it'll give us a little warning, but just click OK. Now, just in case you have multiple clips, uh, I'll show you how you can also create this effect and copy it to the trailing clips. The reality is we only need to do this to the first uh, clip of our entire edit and we can copy the rest of it. So just to show you that, I'm gonna duplicate this a few times just to show you how I can easily copy what I do to the first clip onto the rest. So you can see now that by shrinking our sequence, sequence we've punched in on our footage. If I go to 25% and I click on my clip and hit the word motion, you can see there's my entire clip and there is what we can see of that clip. So now that we've changed our sequence size, we're gonna to need to duplicate all of our footage so that we can have track two be our wide shot and track one can be our close up. That way we'll use the wide shot more often so it makes more sense to leave that on track two. Whenever we need to expose the close up, we'll just peel back track two to show what's underneath it. Okay. So currently, track one and track two look exactly the same. Now, since track two is gonna be our wide shot, all we have to do is select the top clip on track two, the first clip, and go to scale, and just change the scale to 67%. Uh, 1280 by 720 is exactly 33% smaller than 1920 by 1080, therefore, if we scale it to 67%, our full HD video will fit the small HD window perfectly. So we've done that to the first clip on track two, and essentially now all we need to do is copy that to all of the trailing clips on track two. And to do that, all you have to do is click on the uh, clip, go over to the effects control window, and click the word motion. Once you click the word motion, you can copy all of the motion parameters by hitting Command C. Now, if you look down here, you can see on track two, my little FX badge is yellow on the first clip only. But watch what happens after I select the other two clips and hit Command V to paste that attribute. You notice that you can tell it's worked because the FX badge has changed. And you'll see that if I scrub through, it all looks like it fits the window. So we're done with track two. Now we'll go ahead and turn off the eyeball. And notice that on track one, we're still punched in. And that's okay. That's what we want. But if you notice, 
our composition's not very good. So all we need to do on track one now is select the clip, go click on the word motion, and just drag it into place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn track two back on, clicking on this eyeball here. And now if I go to track one, I can, let's see here. Uh, what I can do is I can kind of turn the eyeball on and off until I've got it in a good spot. So I can see on track two, Tony's head's right in kind of the rule of thirds. So I'm gonna turn that off and kind of drag this to about the same spot. And what I like to do at this point is just click on and off and just make sure he's not jumping across the screen or, or you know, jerking violently to the side. Uh, this is a pretty decent looking close up and wide shot. And now just to show you what we've created, oh, and of course, before I move on, we need to select the first clip on track one. We need to click the word motion, hit command C to copy. And then we're just gonna paste it to these two clips. Now, you kinda wanna just put your mouse behind it and sort of drag a little box, just selecting those two clips. Hit command V. And now we have created a close up to go with our wide shot. And if I come over here and just use the cut tool and we'll just peel back a little bit of the top and we'll peel back the end as well. Now again, this might not be exactly how you'd want it, but let's see what we did. But enough slickness on your knee pads so you can actually knee slide out of stuff. And so I was like, yeah, if we have, I think, feel like if we have gator skin indoors, it's gonna last for another 10 years. Okay. But so there you go. That is how you make a close-up in Premiere.